and honestly, like not, it's not for everyone. Um, healthcare may not be for everyone. Um, you need to have a, um, like a compassion, first of all, like a, a need to want to help people. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Dash. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on to this channel where our goal is to really like help uh, empower women and even men all around the world, hopefully. But <laughs> we're going to get right into it. Okay. So we have Michelle. And Michelle is, first, I want to say thank you because I know you work the front line, right? and you experience it firsthand so thank you for doing that during the <laughs> pandemic and until now still serving people in the healthcare field so first my first question is to you um what's your favorite food <laughs> well i am a bit of a foodie i do i love food um I especially love eating food with like other people enjoying food so i'm not so picky with what my favorite food is, I would probably say, um, usually I crave more of like an Asian cuisine. Um, Indonesian? Yeah, you know, like I, I love my mom's cooking. I'm Indonesian. My mom is, I might be biased, she's a great cook. So <laughs> every time I'm like yeah, back home know. visiting her, I love, I love getting like a home cooked meal. Um, but yeah, so I don't know, my favorite food, it's, it's hard to say like, I, I'm not biased, so like sometimes I like I love pizza, sometimes I love pasta, sometimes I love Asian food, sushi. You like everything kind yeah, of. Yeah, I like everything. That's good. Thanks, <laughs> Michelle. So we're gonna get right into it, and um, so the first question is: introduce yourself. Uh, like, where do you live right now? What do you do? Okay, so my name is Michelle. Um, I am a respiratory therapist. Uh, so I work very closely with people who have um, issues with breathing. Uh, currently, I work in a hospital, um, but respiratory therapists are able to work either in the hospital, like in a critical setting, or you can work in home care, um, go to people's uh, homes, or you can work in a clinic as well. Um, so currently, I am living in Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm originally from Ontario, um, Cambridge, Ontario. I was, I've been living, was living there for like tw over 20 years. And then I lived in Toronto for a while uh, when I became a respiratory therapist. So, yeah. I think that's so cool because your position is quite unique. You can actually travel from Nova Scotia and Ontario and Halifax and Toronto, and you can work in both places. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, actually, how can you yeah. do that? So I'm actually very, honestly, I have to say I'm very blessed with this opportunity. So um, I did my schooling in Ontario. Um, I got my license, I had to write an exam, I got my license there. And then I was working in Toronto for, I want to say about eight years, seven, eight years. Um, and then just last year, I decided to make a move um, to another province in Nova Scotia. Um, and the process of that is I needed to be, so each province you have to be licensed um, specifically for that province to work as a respiratory therapist. Similar would be like to a nurse and whatnot. You need a specific license in each province that you're working in. Um, so for me, um, that process was not too bad. I did have to just apply for the license and you have to pay a fee. You also have to do a short um, quiz as well. Um, and then on top of that, I was very fortunate. I applied to um, some of the hospitals here in Halifax and luckily like very, I was very fortunate to get hired on. Um, and then my situation is a bit unique because I'm casual at both places. So I used to be full-time in Toronto and because I decided to move, I dropped down to casual. And then now I'm also casual in Halifax. So. Thankfully, when I go back to visit family in Ontario, I do still have my job there and I'm able to pick up quite a few shifts. Um, and then the same over here, there's shifts available. So 
that that's, that's my amazing. situation. <laughs> that's cool. So for those who want a kind of like a flexible like yeah, life too, it's very possible. Wanted. Yeah, that's so cool. So basically, yeah. um, in Toronto, they just keep you on like the casual list. So when you get there, do you just call them and say, "Hey, I'm yes. back." So I pretty much let them know that I'm back, and then I also give them my availability. So unfortunately, right now with the pandemic, um, there has been a, a big need for respiratory therapists. And the job demand is pretty high, um, and so meaning there's lots of vacancies, there's lots of shifts available. There's a lot of sick calls that happen too, like in Toronto at the hospital that I work at, and I'm sure that's across all the board at all the hospitals right now. Um, and so thankfully there are a lot of shifts. So that's why, yep, yeah, when I come back, I just let them know these are the days that I'm available and then they let me know. And it's usually like filled in, like you get- Yeah, like I've time. been able, so the last time that I came back to visit, I got I got every single shift that I asked for wow. pretty much. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's yeah. really good information. So mm -hmm. it shows like it's an in-demand job, you know? Yes, is currently it is. Yeah. yeah. Walk us through a day in the life of a respiratory therapist. So when you yeah. come into work, what do you have to do right away? Um, so the number one thing that is always consistent, um, we come into work and we get report. So basically our shifts, so being a respiratory therapist, especially working in a hospital, it's a 24-7 service. So meaning um, there is always a so respiratory therapists, I'll just say RT. Um, so there's always an RT available in the hospital. So that also means though that we have to hand off. So our shifts are 12 hours. Um, so there's a day shift and then a night shift. Um, so let's say I'm coming in onto a day shift. Um, I will come in in the morning. Our shift starts at 7.30, but we usually come in around 7, 7.15 to get report. Um, so we'll come in right away in the morning and we'll get report from the night staff. So whatever area that I will be taking over, there was an RT on the night that was taking care of that area. So they'll tell me about all the patients, um, tell me about any updates or anything important happening. Um, and so we'll hand off pagers at that time too. We carry a code pager. Um, so it's just basically um, the pager gives you all of the pages in the whole hospital about what's going on so that you know what's going on. Um, and then afterwards, um, we, another thing that we do is we have to see, we have to do an assessment on each of our state, uh, patients. So those are called rounds. Um, and then afterwards, um, whatever happens, happens. So that's the mm -hmm. other thing about the job is it's very unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes a patient could get sick like this and then you need to do a procedure on them. Um, so okay. we need to be ready for that. Also, Can sometimes, if, there? yeah. What type of procedures would you do? Um, so, oh, there's so as a respiratory therapist, there's so many. So, let's say someone is in um, the ICU, for example, um, and but they're not, they don't have a breathing tube in, um, but we're monitoring them because they're quite sick, and then all of a sudden um, they get more sick, and then we have to basically. Um, put in an airway so meaning they can't breathe on their own so we need to put a breathing tube in them and put them on life support um, whether it be temporary or like the situations could vary um, so that's an example of a procedure another procedure is they already have a breathing tube in um, and all of a sudden their blood pressure like everything else um, the patient's not doing well and so we might need to go to a, um, like to do a scan, like we need to go to either CT or MRI, like to basically get more imaging sometimes in the head or sometimes like in the chest, wherever that area, that problematic area, we need to scan it to figure out, uh, to see if anything's happening. And so a procedure then we would take the patient downstairs for that. Yeah, there's lots of different procedures that we could do. Okay. I love it. Thank you. It just gives the viewers an idea like what to expect, right? Yeah. So definitely it takes courage. So I commend you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> like putting a Thank tube down you. someone is it their throat, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my next question is, um, what what would what education do they need 
like what school can they apply to to become okay. an RT? Yeah, uh, so to become an RT, I'll start with what I know. So for me personally, um, I went to um, high school first. So a lot of the, I think all of the programs actually in Canada, um, they're all over Canada. There is a program here in Halifax at the university here. Um, in Toronto, there is a program there. And then like in Ontario, there's a, a few places you could go to, but the requirement, the only requirement is that you need to finish high school. Um, but I will say that a lot of people um, that go into respiratory therapy school, they have had some sort of background um, in university or college. So meaning they have completed their undergrad, which is what I did. Um, I did my undergrad in health studies um, and afterwards I just didn't know what to do. And so that's why I ended up in RT, which is the best um, for me. But um, yeah, so a lot of people completed either four years of university or just some years. Um, and I will say that that actually helped a lot um, because the program is quite heavy. Okay, so, yeah. great. So if they're researching what school to go to, do they just go on Google or is there yeah, specific so, schools that offer? So if you Google um, respiratory therapy school in whatever province that you are going to be um, applying to, let's say in Ontario, there will be, so it'll say Michener um, is one of them. Conestoga College is another one. Uh, those are the two main ones that I know of in Ontario. Um, but if you just Google respiratory therapy schools in Canada, for example, um, it, there will be a list. Um, each school might be a little bit different for the process, um, but the website should list specific requirements. Thank you so much. All right. And then uh, I'm going to go down our list because I know I sent you one. Um, okay. How much money do you make as a respiratory therapist? RT. Would you say RT? So, yeah. So as an RT, um, it's a pretty well-paying job. Um, it's a lot of stress, a lot of like unpredictability. So if that's for you that's great but in terms of like job salary it can range anywhere between um 70 000 to 90 000. so obviously when you're starting off um you're on the lower end and then once you Which work more 70, years 000. you yeah you'll make your way up exactly that's awesome thanks michelle you're welcome um yeah so is this job would you can say it will still be in demand um say for a girl who's in high school right now and wants to be an RT um, for the next 30 years until she retires, will it be, do you believe it will still be in the room? So to be honest, um, I would say like 20 years ago, it probably wasn't as in demand, um, but especially because of the pandemic, I think it definitely has been in more demand. Um, and so right now, currently, I want to say yes, that it's in demand, but I, it's hard to say. It's such an unpredictable um, field, but like, I mean, there's always people who need help breathing. Yeah, we all have lips, we yeah. all have lungs. And yes. you know what, I work in, me and Jen, we work in like the admin side of the medical field. And yes. I feel like there's not enough people, you know, there's, yes. it is, I feel like maybe, um, Janice was saying like there's a whole generation that is getting older right? exactly um, and they're all retiring and they're mm -hmm. all leaving and yeah so yeah. there will there will always be some sort of a demand <laughs> um <job>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway thanks Michelle You're all welcome. right um what are the pros of this job and then what are the cons like three pros and then three cons okay um some of the, so the top three pros of being an RT, I would say is specifically like shift work. I do like the fact that um, I have a lot of flexibility, I feel like, and just the type of work that I do being um, in the hospital, I work the 12 hour shifts, either days or nights. Um, but that also means that I am not working like a standard Monday to Friday, eight to four. So meaning I do have a lot of days off during the week, um, which is nice, a lot of flexibility so I could do 
go to appointments, um, do my errands during the week, do groceries. It's less busy um, during the week as well. So that's my number one favorite is my schedule. Um, number two is definitely um, I work with a variety of patients. And not only that, you work with a variety of like coworkers. Um, so I do love the fact that I get to interact with a little bit of everyone. Um, so the patients sometimes they're they're talking, they're you know I can have a conversation. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, they can't talk because they have a breathing tube in, um, mm -hmm. and they're on medicine to keep them um, calm and whatnot. Um, and then on top of that, I interact with the family members, and then. I work with so many different professions like nurses, doctors, pharmacists, um, even like the cleaners, like the uh, everyone. And so it's really nice to just interact with everyone, really. Um, we're all human. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, it's a um, very, I guess, social like you can exactly it, it can job. be it can be as social as you want or or not social at all <laughs> if you don't choice. want. So it, yeah. it's really but up to it, your personality. Yeah. 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 Um, so those are my two top favorite things. And then I guess number three is, yeah, it's just um, it, the un I kind of do like the unpredictability, like meaning it's not the same thing every mm -hmm. single day and every single shift. Yeah. You yeah. that can also be a con for me, too, as mm -hmm. well, though. So depending on your personality, if you like routine, if you like structure, um, that might not be so great. So that'll be a pro and a con. Um, the unpredictability of the shift. Um, so those were like my pros and then the cons again, like the unpredictability. Um, sometimes like when you are in a stressful or when it's super busy, um, mm -hmm. it's really busy. And sometimes you just, you don't get a break. That's just the reality of it. Sometimes you're just running around so much and then it depends on your coworkers. If you, if they're also super busy, um, sometimes no one is able to help because everyone is just busy running around. Um, and so sometimes that can be very stressful. Um, another con, I guess, is um, sometimes you have to work a shift that you don't want to. Like sometimes you have to work a night um, mm -hmm. or sometimes you have to work a weekend night. And then depending on your family life, like if you have kids or whatnot, like sometimes you're missing out on that. Um, so. Yeah, those are some of the cons, like, but for the most part, I, I would say the pros outweigh the cons. Love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, thanks, Michelle. So um, let me see what else we have here. Yeah, no problem. All right. Um, so for someone who is, okay, first, how do they apply to become an RT? Or when you graduate from college or yeah. university, do they in, uh, immediately place you or do you have to apply? Yep, so I'll talk about the process maybe a little bit of what RT school is like. Um, so first, when you apply into the, co the program, um, so I know in Toronto, uh, I don't know if it's still currently the same, but when I applied many years ago, um, you go through a process, it's called MMI, so multiple mini interviews. Um, so that wasn't your typical standard interview, like let's say, for example, you and I are doing right now, like over Zoom chat, mm -hmm. right? Um, so back then we had to go um, in person and there was a hallway with like, let's say 10 rooms all together, like five and five. Um, and this was a little bit nerve wracking because I've never done one of these before. Um, so you basically, everyone, there's like 10 of us and we each line up in front of each door. Um, and then a timer goes off, you turn around and you read the scenario on the door. Wow. Another timer goes off <laughs> and then you open the door, yeah. enter the room and you have to respond to the scenario, for example. So you get a few minutes to do that. And then once the timer goes off, you come back out and then you rotate. So those were called multiple mini interviews to see. Um, and the main point of that is to assess your personality, um, assess your reaction, um, assess your communication. Um, so there, those are the main things that um, the interview will be about because they want, because not, and honestly, like not, it's not for everyone. Um, healthcare may not be for everyone. Um, you need to have a 
um, like a compassion, first of all, like a, a need to want to help people. And then it's the way how you communicate as well. Um, so those are the main things that you look for. So once you go through that process um, and then you get accepted, um, the program is a total of three years in um, Toronto and I believe in Kitchener as well at Conestoga. Um, so you do two years in school. So you're in class learning. Um, I will say it is pretty heavy, the material. Um, and then also after that, um, you do a semi, like clinical um, trial. So you basically go into the hospital. So you get placement. Um, so you'll get placed into a specific hospital and you'll carry out your clinical for about eight months. Um, and then afterwards, uh, when you pass that, you write a big exam. Um, and that's a pretty heavy exam. It's, I wanna say, oh, I wanna say it was a total of eight hours. Um, so, and that's broken up wow. into two parts. Is that um, like so the, um, oral writing, eight hours of writing? So it's, it's all written. It was all multiple choice. The process could be a little bit different at each school, or not, sorry, all, not each school, but um, every year they do it a little bit differently. And I think more recently they've transitioned um, to be computerized. Um, so when I wrote it, it, it was by hand, but multiple choice. Um, but no matter what school you you go to, it's the Canadian national um, exam that you're writing. So no matter what uh, province you're in, um, it's all the same. Thank you. <clears throat> Another question is, how much does it cost? So uh, um, how much should they prepare? Or okay. So depending, so you're talking about the exam or the whole program? Um, the whole program. Ooh, the whole program. So hmm, I'm going to have to say I'm not, I can't quite remember, but I want to say, honestly, I could just do a quick search here. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, Doc. And they can probably apply for OSAP, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so um, you can definitely apply. So for me in Ontario, <laughs> I was able to apply for OSAP. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, I had to move away from home. So I got a little bit more. Um, and I had I got the chance to live on residence. So that was really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we'll yeah. talk about that one day. Yeah, uh, like another. residence. Yeah, life, for sure. School life, how did it Moving look? away from home for the first yeah. time, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, you can definitely get support um, from OSAP, like government funding, um, but I can't exactly remember like how much the program is. I know that the exam is quite expensive. I think it was about 700 or $900 when I wrote it. So, and every year, like every few years, the price does go up, unfortunately. Oh. And just to get an idea, um, in terms of your license, you do need to maintain a license every year. Um, so the cost mm -hmm. of that, um, currently in Ontario, is about $650. Um, mm -hmm. And then in, ha in Nova Scotia, um, it's about $475. So that's another thing to consider is if you are planning on living in two different provinces or multiple provinces, you do need to maintain that license every year um, for both provinces. Okay, that's cool. I was going to ask you that if you yeah. had to get a license in both. That? Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. need to maintain that. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Michelle. And we, I have one last question for sure. you. Um, and also, if you guys have questions for Michelle, feel free to ask us in the comments. Yes. Michelle is so sweet, so kind, so willing to answer any uh, question, you know, about you can ask about life, you can ask about yeah, being in anything, IT, anything, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. And then my last question is, you have a Tesla, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you prepared? You hear look shy. <laughs> a little bit. A little aw. No, I just want to say, how do you like your Tesla? Um, I do like it, but honestly, yeah. like, I might not be the best person to ask. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I like it, um, mm -hmm. but it's just a car, honestly. Yeah. Um, even if I had to get rid of it, that's okay. Like it's, and honestly, I, I don't even have it here with me, so I'm mm. not even like currently driving it. That's okay. But like, it's mm. sure, it's 
it's fun. It's it's, it's nice. Fine. Is it worth <laughs> it really for the environment? No, no. I don't think okay. so. No. All right. No. Uh oh. <laughs> Thank you. But, that was all I, true. Yeah. But I do like that it's electric, right? So yeah. That's yeah. and you don't have to worry about gas and whatnot. So that that is my favorite part. Yeah. I, I, I got to sit in Michelle's Tesla. It was so nice. And um, we had to find places to charge it, remember? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> so, that was, yeah, never thought about the, that. The con about that, my biggest con, especially because I don't have a home base where I charge, um, I find it pretty difficult to make sure that the car is charged all the time. And you always have to think ahead and plan ahead about where you're driving to and how much battery it's going to take and then do you have a place to charge it are you near a, a supercharger so those are some things to consider to yeah <laughs> well thanks michelle maybe yeah. one day we'll if you guys have questions about her tesla <laughs> ask it in the comments <laughs> but i just thank you so much for your time and uh giving wisdom to all of us and you're welcome we'll hope to talk to you again more and more in the future Okay. No problem. Bye. Bye. I'll talk to you after. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs>